Good evening, and welcome to Nancy Fest. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Please join me in welcoming your official Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum curators and hosts for the evening, one Jenny Robb and one Caitlin McGrath. to present a video of Ernie Bushmiller. Um, this is something that we located recently. I was kind of looking for inspiration about what we might uh, talk about here um, in the welcome. And I found a, a VHS tape in the Milton Kniff collection that was of a TV show called Fabulous Funnies. Has anybody here in the audience have anyone heard of Fabulous Funnies? Has anyone seen Fabulous Funnies? A couple of you have. OK, well, you're going to recognize uh, this clip, it was something of a, a variety show, history of the comics, kind of a documentary. Uh, it was a partnership with the National Cartoonist Society, and it aired on February 11th, 1968. It was produced by Bill Melendez um, and hosted by Carl Reiner. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're, we're going to see here is a, is a very short clip um, of an interview uh, with Mr. Bushmiller himself. <laughs> Ernie Bushmiller has been drawing his character Nancy for over 30 years, and it is now one of the most popular comic strips in the entire world. Visiting with him at his home in Stamford, Connecticut, we asked Ernie how he comes up with his ideas. Many times I just, I dig out a scissor book catalog. <laughs> I just leap forward and look for different objects, like a collapsible 
Piney wood or a stove or a wrench. Any object can just figure out what to do. Twist it into a gag. And it, and it works quite often. See, as well, but as my chief assistant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is an old uh, cliffhanger. <laughs> Some guy said he was playing the horses with my strip. And he said he was watching me in a first panel of one. If Nancy's two fingers were up, that was the second race, and it was the thousands in and he was winning. <laughs> so I do want to say a special thank you to our AV digitization department here at uh, the Ohio State University Libraries who uh, was able to digitize the tape in record time so that we could get a clip um, in this uh, to show you all tonight. Uh, so we are really, really pleased to, to be able to show it. Uh, I'd also like to now say a few thank yous, um, to, particularly to our sponsors. Uh, I'd like to give a, a really hearty thank you to our major Nancy level sponsors, the National Cartoonist Society Foundation and the National Cartoonist Society. Many of you know Ernie Bushmiller was a founding member and a big supporter of the NCS. So we're very grateful to the foundation for sponsoring tonight's reception uh, and the Nancy Show exhibit. And I'd like to now invite John Hambrock up to say a few words on behalf of the foundation. Hey, are we having fun yet? Because I sure am. Do you see those hot dogs out there? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm here as a representative of the National Cartoonist Society Foundation. And, and first off, I have to say, uh, what an incredibly great start to a fun weekend. I'm sure it's going to be just fantastic. Uh, and I have to say, on behalf of the foundation, how very, very proud we are to be a major sponsor of this event. Uh, you know, we've, uh, this is our mission to be major sponsors of uh, important events like Nancy Fest. Um, and I'm glad we were able to step up and be a part of this. Thank you for asking, uh, Jenny. Um, lastly, thank you, Jenny, for, and Caitlin for hosting us all here tonight for this Bushmiller Bash of the Century. I love that phrase, and I think we should use it. So enjoy, everyone. I hope you have a great time for the rest of the weekend. And, and thank you for being here. Sold out, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> Andrews, Andrews McNeil Universal uh, and Scripps, and we also have special sponsors, uh, Rebecca Perry uh, and Ben Toll. So uh, thank you, round of applause to all of you. <laughs> and, and I just want to let you all know that we originally were going to be charging a lot more for registration, and it's because of these generous folks that we were able uh, to keep it as low as it was. So thank you very much again. So now I'd like to introduce Brian Walker, the curator of The Nancy Show. How many people have seen The Nancy Show, the exhibit? So Brian is part of the creative team behind Beetle Bailey and High and Lois, which uh, probably most of you know were originally created or co-created by his father, Mort Walker. Brian was the co-founder and director of the Museum of Cartoon Art from 1974 until 1992. He's curated more than 75 cartoon exhibitions. Uh, and most recently here at the Billy Island Cartoon Library Museum, he curated The Dog Show, Two Centuries of Canine Cartoons, and Artistically Mad, Seven Decades of Satire. He's also written, edited, or contributed to 45 books about cartoon art. There's probably more than that by now, I would imagine. Uh, including a, a massive history of the comic strip, the comics, the complete collection, and also, of course, the best of Ernie Bushmiller's Nancy. So please join me in welcoming Brian Walker. So since there are so many people here tonight, we decided to forego the usual curator's tour, like cur escorting everybody through the gallery, which is not physically possible. So I'm gonna share with you some behind the scenes photos and film clips about the making of this exhibition. 
and then show you a few highlights. Ernie Burstmiller produced a daily newspaper comic strip from 1925 to 1982. He designed his creation to communicate to the widest possible audience. Despite its popularity, Nancy was never taken seriously. To appreciate the perfection of his creation, you need to accept it for what it is, a comic strip, pure and simple. For over half a century, Ernie Bushmiller continued his single-minded pursuit of the perfect gag. I became a Nancy Con convert 36 years ago when my good friend and book editor, pictured here, David Stanford, called to tell me that United Feature Syndicate wanted to do a book on Nancy and wanted to, wanted to know if I wanted to work on it. I said, why would I do that? I hate Nancy, it's a stupid comic strip. <laughs> David said, that's exactly why I'm asking you. <laughs> and he obviously knew something that I didn't know. So my book came out in 1988. Two years later, we did a Nancy exhibit at the Museum of Cartoon Art in Rybrook, New York, and the poster was done by Kitchen Sink Press. <laughs> this was the landing on the staircase in Ward's Castle leading to the exhibit. The background was made from the end papers of my book. We used it again in the current exhibit. Mm. The following film clip, I'm going to show you some other rare pieces here, is from the Nancy opening on March 31st, 1990. That was done, filmed by my brother Neil Walker, who's here. In attendance were Dennis Kitchen, James Carlson, my father, and my son David. Trying out to grind as it falls about. That's Dennis. He was so young back then. That's, that's my father in work. Even he was young. That's me. Green Gray. There's Dennis talking to Jim Carlson. And this little sluggo is my son David, who's filming here tonight. He's four months old. <laughs> Many years after the museum exhibit, Mark Newgarden and Paul Karasek told me they were planning to do an ambitious expansion, an expansion of an essay they wrote for my book. And I said, an entire book about one Nancy comic strip? I said, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> 10 years later, they finished it, and it's a classic of Nancy scholarship. And it taught. <laughs> college courses around the country, probably around the world at this point. That's Tom Gamble and Ernie's friend and neighbor, Jim Carlson, in the photo with Mark and Paul. The renewed interest in Nancy got me thinking about a Nancy revival. In 2022, the Billy Ireland agreed to my proposal for an exhibit, and my son David, who is a professional filmmaker, and I decided to produce a documentary. We're going to give you a sneak peek of this work in progress. David is here filming tonight. The following is an opening scene in front of the Ward Castle, the former home of the Museum of Cartoon Art. As Ernie Bushmiller often said, Nancy was a strip that he wrote for the common man, for the average reader, wanted to appeal to the broadest audience. But I think that over the years, a lot of art critics and, and comic scholars have discovered that it was a lot more to Nancy than it was ever given the credit for. So I think with that reevaluation that's in the air now, I think it's maybe time to do a Nancy show.
I first met Tom Hamill at a Rubens weekend in 2009. He told me he was a big fan of my Nancy book, and we became good friends immediately. In 2018, my wife Abby and I visited him at his home in Los Angeles, where we dined in the Ernie Bushmiller Cartoon Library and Museum. <laughs> Tom has a huge collection of Nancy artwork and memorabilia and is the major lender to this exhibition tonight. This is a film clip of Tom and I selecting artwork for the Nancy show last summer at his house. Ready to look at some Bushmillers, sir? I asked my, my wife, would it be okay if I hung them up in the house? And she said, if you keep them all in one room, that's fine. So everything I have is here, plus a few in the basement. But, uh, yeah, but you want to get a little closer, see what you want for... Uh, yeah, we'll pick some oh, pieces out that we can use in the show. Let's do it! I don't even get ideas by looking through the Sears catalog. And you know, Ernie saw these boots. And so, what can I do with that? And then he probably turned the page and saw a dining room table. And he did the math. Yeah. Dining room table plus boots equals hilarity. He probably made to some uh, staircase. This is Sorgo ascending the tree. But look at all those heads. That is beautifully done. You told me an interesting story oh. about this one. Yes. So, this, this one. My wife and I were in this room talking about it at the end of the meeting, Jenny, our lawyer says, and uh, all these will go to Ohio State for their permanent collection. It's starting to shake like this. It jumped off the wall and it shattered. Uh, it did not want to go to Ohio State. So this one definitely will not be in the exhibit. So he drew those with a compass probably. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Now look how perfect those circles are. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, and this one looks familiar. 56. Yeah, this is what's called a flop. Mm -hmm. The character yeah. goes out of the frame. That's this is a nice one. Where yeah. is it? Where is it? 57. You're going to have to include some of the viewers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very bored dog. In March, Tom's artwork arrived at the Billy Island. Zippy the pen, Pinhead called me a few years ago and told me he was working on a graphic biography of Ernie Bushman. The book came out in 2023. This photo was taken at his studio in Connecticut. Like many cartoonists, Bill is a workaholic. This is his ink stained drawing board. Here are some original pen and ink pages from the book. We have 36 of these in the exhibit. David and I filmed at Bill's studio and shot a scene of him working on his Bushmiller fire. Yeah, so whenever I show uh, an image from a Nancy comic strip in my book, it is taken from the Nancy artwork. I do not redraw any image in the book. What I do is I cut and paste 
I never draw Nancy, I never draw Sluggo or Fritzy or any of the characters. I cut them out, old fashioned cut and paste, and I put them into the panel where I want them. And I do this because the Nancy artwork is so precise, so honed down. I want to have the original Ernie Bushmiller perfection. So now I'm going to paste in the punchline, which Ernie called the snapper, to this particular gag. So I've gone through from first panel, second panel, third panel, and now the last panel. To try to imitate Bushmiller's drawing style is an act of futility. There's something about there's something about utter simplicity that makes it more difficult to imitate than something more complex. And Ernie's style, if nothing else, is about utter simplicity. It's about boiling down things to their essence. A lot of geometric shapes. He used a ruler, he used a French curve, he used a compass. Nancy strips were very conscious of the relationships between black areas and white areas. There are um, lessons for cartoonists and how to deal with what's called in comic drawing circles, spotting your blacks. I've known Pete Moresco for many years. This is a picture of a panel he did on Crazy Cat at the 2019 Rubens. Also in the picture are Patrick McDonald, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, and Michael Tizaran, who is here tonight. Is he? There's gotta be a dancing gag in that. <laughs> Last October, Pete and I decided to collaborate on a catalog for the Nancy show. Miraculously, we finished it on time, and there are copies here for sale this weekend. I will now share a few highlights from the exhibit. It's divided into two parts, the best of Ernie Bush Bushmiller's artwork in the Robinson Gallery and beyond Bushmiller in the Friends Gallery. This is from Pete Moresca's collection and is the first appearance of Nancy in the Sunday Funnies in 1938. This is one of my favorite Sunday pages from the Tom Gamble collection. It has Nancy visiting an abstract art exhibit and was used on the poster for the 1990s. <laughs> this gem from the Billy Ireland collection has Nancy dreaming about her future marriage to Sluggo. I point out that she can both be both sweet and vain in the same Sunday page. This page, on loan from Dennis Kitchen, is a good example of Bushmiller's clever use of wordplay and visual humor. <laughs> These two strips from Mark Newgarden's collection are good examples of surrealism in Bushmiller's work. Patrick McDonald provided us with a number of fine examples of meta-humor in the strip. <laughs> These are from my collection. They were given to me by Jim Carlson in 1990. <laughs> in the 1960s, modern artists, most prominently Andy Warhol and Joe Brainerd, used Nancy's images in their paintings, collages, and drawings. Patrick McDonald, the creator of Mutz, did a series of comic-inspired paintings which were exhibited in 2020, 2021 at the Urban Art Space in Columbus. In the 1950s, Mad Magazine featured some memorable Nancy spoofs drawn by Wally Wood. In the 1980s, Nancy appeared regularly in Raw Magazine. This cover is by Gary Panter, and the spread is by Charles Burns, Ever Mullen, and Art Spiegelman. 
Nancy, Fritzi, Fritzi, and Sluggo starred in various comic books from different publishing companies from the late 1930s to the 1970s. Nancy was never a huge marketing success, but there were many items produced during the years, peak years of the strip, from the 1940s to the 1970s. A revival of interest led to another wave of products in more recent years. The figures on the right are from Dark Horse. To promote his series of Nancy reprint books in the late 1980s and early 90s, Dennis Kitchen produced many unique items, including buttons, pins, postcards, and apparel, like this tie that I'm wearing. I see many other people have it too. This Nancy costume <laughs> appeared in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in the 1980s. Caitlin McGurk found it online and loaned it for the exhibit. <laughs> All of the artists who succeeded Ernie Bushmiller on Nancy, Mark Lasky, Jerry Scott, Todd Gilchrist, are represented in the exhibit. There are also tryout strips by Ivan Brunetti and Gary Hallgren. The current artist on the strip is Olivia James, who will be speaking virtually here tomorrow. Nancy fans are currently very active on the internet. Some of you here tonight, I know, are members of the How to Read Nancy Facebook group. I see a show of hands. Wow. It's been very helpful in some of the research on this exhibit. And you regularly post historical strips, interesting tidbits, bizarre Nancy items, including unlicensed products, odd takes on the character, just weird stuff like pumpkins and bricks that look like Nancy. Wow. <laughs> I'm to this Facebook page. Well, I'll let you go now. Enjoy the reception, and remember, dare to be dumb. <laughs> circulating throughout the reception, and there is one sluggo in the audience that I think is very, very good. <laughs> so you're receiving the, the first copy in the wild of the, um, the Nancy Show catalog. thank yous. Um, boy, there were way too many to mention everybody's sure. names. So instead of doing that, I you know, made this, this wonderful slide. These are all the people that made the Nancy Show exhibit and the Nancy Show catalog possible. Uh, Brian already talked about the catalog. We saw a copy of it there. Um, really, this has been incredible that so many people have come together uh, from all over uh, to donate, to it's offer to advice and, and information. The Billy Ireland Cartoon Library Museum team, our student workers, uh, lots of people from the university libraries who have helped out. So 
A round of applause for all of these folks. But that's not all. We have even more people uh, who have helped make Nancy Fest possible. Um, and I, I just really want to say this is a great start. I hope you all are having as, as much fun as we are. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. So right now, you're welcome to go back, uh, have some more food, have some drinks. The exhibit will be open until 8.30. Um, and then tomorrow, we will be starting here. We have uh, the... We'll have, we'll have coffee uh, served outside, as well as donuts from Buckeye Donuts, our local donut shop, um, starting at 9.30 a.m. And then uh, at 10 a.m., beginning in this room is the Nancy Summit for the first official meeting of the Ernie Bushmiller Society. Then that'll go from 10 to 11.20. Then at 11.30, we'll have a virtual presentation from Olivia James. Uh, then we'll have a lunch break from 12 to 1.30. And at 1.30, come back to the space for a presentation from How to Read uh, Nancy authors, Mark Newgarden and Paul Karasik. Then another short break and come back here at uh, three, four, or sorry, two thirty for a presentation from uh, Bill Griffith about three rocks. Right. After that, we'll have the um, book sale in the Eisner seminar room where you can purchase the catalog as well as books by all of our special guests. Um, and then a dinner break, and then at seven p.m. the grand finale, which is a stage play by Tom Gamble. <laughs> play at 6 30 p.m. and I, I highly encourage you to get here early and get a seat because it is completely completely sold out and there's going to be a little pre-show as well with some uh, some really rare images of you know, the Bushmiller family um, uh, uh, playing on a reel before uh, the play begins at 7. All right, thank you Caitlin. Uh, so with that everybody please enjoy uh, the rest of the reception and uh, then we'll see you tomorrow.